What I like about this build is that Mentara can use her actions for her attacks and she can use her bonus action for her spells. Another thing I like in this build is that Mentara has a lot of spell slots to spend for her smites. Hello guys, Genuine here of Genuine Gaming, and here is my Mintra companion build for Baldur's Gate 3. This is not an overpowered build, but a thematic and lore friendly one. I call this build the Spellblade of Vengeance. Even though it is only a thematic and lore friendly build, you can play this build on Tactician difficulty. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to like, and for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos, subscribe to the channel. Overview Being a drow, Mintra is usually highly hostile to other creatures. She considers everything else as inferior. She has a special disdain for those who do not share her beliefs. She also has a bonus ability called Soul Branding. It is a bonus action wherein Mintra bestows on a creature a 1.5 meter increase in movements and its next attack deals an additional 2d4 plus 1 fire damage. At first level, Mintra is an Oath of Vengeance Paladin. However, I did not build her as a pure paladin but multiclass her with a sorcerer class to make her deadly in combat. I enable her to attack and cast at the same turn as long as she has bonus action and 3 sorcery points to spare. And if you want a character that is easy to persuade to take on Illithid powers, Mindra is a good choice as she immediately agrees to take on Mind Flayer Tadpoles to get more Illithid powers. Gear and Equipment Mindra, the spell Blade of Vengeance, can provide three roles to the party. One, she can be the face of the party because of her high charisma. Two, she can be the primary striker of the party because of her amazing smite abilities. And lastly, she can be your primary crowd controller as she has sorcerer spells at her disposal. I would suggest equipping Mithra with a helmet of arcane equity. This helmet would give two turns of arcane equity to the wielder every time they deal damage with a weapon attack. Arcane Equity gives the affected character a plus one bonus to its spell attack rolls and spell save DC per turn remaining. It has a maximum of seven turns. This helmet is found in Act 2 in the Mason's Guild basement. For the weapon, I would prefer a two-handed weapon for optimized damage. Preferably a great sword as it would look cool on Mithra. There are several great swords in the game. Just equip Mithra with any great sword of your choosing. To further increase her damage output, I would suggest equipping her with rings that would increase her damage output like the Strange of Conduit Ring, wherein if Mithra is concentrating on a spell, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage. You can get this ring inside a chest in the Inquisitor's Chamber in Kreshielik. Vengeance Paladin and Sorcerer spells have a lot of useful concentration spells. Just make sure that Mintra is concentrating a spell for an optimized damage. I would suggest equipping Mintra with gloves of dexterity to boost its dexterity to 18. Although it does not increase Mintra's damage output, it would give her initiative rolls a plus 3 bonus. I built Mintra with a combination of Paladin and Sorcerer. This is on Tactician difficulty and you are only going to respect Mintra once with Withers. This made this build good for roleplaying. Build for her ability points, make Mithra Strength 17, Charisma 16, Constitution 14, and Dexterity 10. As for her skills, choose any among the Charisma-based skills depending on your party's needs. For Mithra's first Paladin level, choose Vengeance for her Oath. She gains 3 charges of Lay on Hands, which resets after a long rest, and 1 charge of Channel Oath, which resets after a short rest. As a Paladin of Vengeance, she gains Inquisitor's Might for her Channel Oath. Inquisitor's Might is a bonus action that grants a two-turn single-target buff that causes Mintras or her allies attack to deal an additional radiant damage based on the Charisma modifier of the caster. The damage can also daze enemies for one turn. At level 2, Mintra gets Divine Smite, a very powerful Paladin ability. When a paladin hits with a melee weapon attack, the paladin may choose to expend a spell slot to inflict additional radiant damage depending on the spell slot expended. The higher the spell slot, the higher the damage. Mindra also gains two first level spell slot. Still at level 2 paladin, Mindra gets a fighting style. Choose great weapon fighting for an optimized damage. At level 3, Mindra gets divine health. Mintra cannot be 
affected by any disease. She now has three first level spell slots. As a Vengeance Paladin, she gains Bane and Hunter's Mark as a spell that is always prepared. She also gains two Shadow Oath abilities, Abjure Enemy and Vow of Enmity. Abjure Enemy frightens an enemy. They will be easier to hit and they cannot move. Vow of Enmity allows the caster to gain an advantage on her attack roll against the targeted enemy. At level 4, Minthra now has 4 charges of Lay of Hands. For her feat, choose Heavy Armor Master to make her strength 18 and it reduces any incoming damage from non-magical attacks by 3 when wearing a heavy armor. At level 5, Minthra now gains the extra attack feature of a martial class. She now has 4 first level spell slots and 2 second level spell slots. As a Vengeance Paladin, she gains Hold Person and Misty Step as an additional spell that is always prepared. At character level 6, Minthra is going to multi-class to Sorcerer up to character level 12. This would allow Minthra to gain more spell slots for her Smite ability. As a level 1 Sorcerer, Minthra chooses Friends, Mage Hand, Light, and Shocking Grasp for her cantrips. Shocking Grasp is a good cantrip for Minthra as it is the only damage dealing that does not give a disadvantage because of close combat. For her spells, choose Shield and Magic Missile. For her subclass, you can choose any. However, I would suggest choosing Storm Sorcery as you would gain more spells compared to the other subclasses. At character level 7, Minthra chooses Thunder Wave for her spell. She also now has 3 level 2 spells as a level 2 Sorcerer and level 5 Paladin. She also gains 2 Sorcery Points and 2 Meta Magic Ability. For her meta magic, choose Careful Spell and Twin Spell. Careful Spell allows her allies to automatically succeed in saving throws against spell that required them. Twin Spells allow the caster to target an additional creature for spells that only target one creature. At character level 8, Minthra chooses Enhance Ability for her spell. Enhance Ability is a very useful utility spell to have an advantage on ability check rolls. It is a concentration spell but it lasts until long rest. She now gains 2 level 3 spell slots. At card to level 9, Minthra increases her strength to 20 for her feet. Or you can give Minthra the Potion of Everlasting Vigor to increase Minthra's strength to 20 so that you can increase Minthra's Charisma to 18. For her cantrip, choose Firebolt. Choose Shatter for the spell. Minthra now has 3 level 3 spell slots. At character level 10, Minthra now has 5 sorcery points as a level 5 sorcerer. For her spell, choose Fireball and replace Thunder Wave with Haste spell. She gains 1 level 4 spell slot. At character level 11, Minthra learns the following spells for her subclass. Call Lightning. Sleet Storm, Thunder Wave, Gust of Wind, and Create or Destroy Water. She also gets the Heart of Storm feature. For her spell, choose Counter Spell. And change Shatter with Lightning Spell. She now has 2 level 4 spell slots. At character level 12, Minthra has 7 sorcery points as a level 5 sorcerer. For her spell, choose Ice Storm. She now has 3 level 3 spell slots and 1 level 5 spell slot. Gameplay Before combat, I would suggest preparing 9 sorcery points so as not to waste your bonus action to convert your spell slots into sorcery points. During combat, I would suggest building up your arcane equity by hitting enemies before using your spells for more effective spell casting. With Helmet of Arcane Equity, Minthra only needs 2 turns if all of her attack hits for an optimized arcane equity. What I like about this build is that Minthra can use her action for her attacks and she can use her bonus action for her spells. Another thing I like in this build is that Minthra has a lot of spell slots to spend for her smites. She also has this unique ability called Soul Branding which is useful for additional damage. So that's my Minthra, the Spellblade of Vengeance build. Hope you find the video helpful and see you in the next video. Ciao!